Hello everybody, I'm Nick and what I have in front of me right now is two applications, the exact same code running in Android and iOS. And as you can see, all it is is a hello world application with an increment button that is doubling the value every time you click. And I am doing this right now. And this is running using the Blazor bindings on top of Xamarin. And this is the exact same programming model that you would use to make a web application, but now it's used on top of what essentially is um, Xamarin forms to create native components, native applications, and they don't look particularly great, but if you look at the code, it's very simple to customize it right. And even though this is very experimental at this stage, and it's basically a beta that you can participate in, I really want to highlight this and potentially get you involved into it, and Microsoft will need all the help they can get to get this off the ground. I think it's a brilliant idea, and I saw it coming. I mean, Steve Sanderson was making demos about this in all the conferences he was going around, so it was just inevitable to happen. Now it is becoming a product, and I'm very excited about it. We're going to see how we got there and how you can get started in this video. Keep in mind, this is still in beta, so anything you see can change, and there will be definitely bugs. I already had to fix a few to get this working fine, but as you can see, it is working fine, and we're going to see how we got here. So let me just quickly close this application, and I'm going to show you how to get started. The first thing you need to do to get started is make sure you have Visual Studio Installer with the latest version of Visual Studio installed and what you need to make sure you have is the Xamarin, the mobile development with .NET checked and everything downloaded because we're gonna need that for what we're gonna be doing because it's essentially Xamarin with a few Blazor stuff. And now once we have that done what you need to do is run a sort of a shell here i'm going to use partial and we just make this a bit more readable and then i'm going to paste this command which you can find in the description down below and this will allow you to install the blazor bindings templates so you can get started with uh, this sort of programming model and i'm going to run this and it's going to say that i already have them because i already have them installed and this is what you should be seeing and now I'm going to say .NET because I can do new, not mu, new mobile uh, blazor bindings and O and I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to call it blazor mobile app. And what this will do is it's going to create this uh, project using the experimental mobile blazor bindings app. And as you can see, this is here. And I'm going to go ahead and open it with Visual Studio 2019. And let's see what we have in here. So this project structure might look familiar to many of you that have used Xamarin before. What you essentially have is your shared library that's going to be used by both your Android and iOS versions of the application. And within them you have nothing fancy, just your main uh, and your main activity, box standard stuff, nothing fancy here. But if we open the shared one where we would normally have the XAML files and all that, the only thing that we have is an app.cs, which if you're familiar with this, it's extending the application class. And then we have some initialization code here and things like on start, on sleep and on resume. These are events. And then what we have is this host here, which might look familiar from Blazor stuff because this is the way we're creating a host in the .NET side of things as well, the .NET Core especially. And this add component should also be very familiar because we are already doing this in our Blazor code. And if I just F12 into this, actually I cannot do this, but if I look into this, you can see that this is nothing but a Razor component. And in this specific scenario, we have the stack layout, some margins, a label and a counter which is a nested component which we have the code for here and what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna try to just run this for Android right and what I'm doing is if I click on the uh, Android SDK manager obviously I have the uh, API 28 which is I think Android Pi yet yeah, it's, it's here I have this installed you need to have this installed or any other version that you want to run it against and then you need to open the device manager and you need to have at least one emulator. I just created this with a default configuration so there's nothing fancy here. And once you have that done, you can actually run this application against that Android emulator. So it will appear here and you'll be able to just run it. And this will boot up and it will eventually 
run the application. I'm going to speed up this process because I don't want you to just wait for my PC. And as you can see, it just works. I can just increment and it's increasing one on every click. And let's see how we can just customize this, you know, because here you can, you know, this is very basic, but what if we have a counter service that is incrementing this on a different interval? I will go, or step, sorry. I will go to the uh, Blazor mobile app and I'm going to do a right click. I don't want to build. I'm going to do uh, add a new class and I'm going to name this class uh, counter service. And in this counter service, I'm going to create a single method which uh, will return an integer and it's going to say uh, just increment. And I'm going to accept a count and I'm going to return. Uh, what should I return? Count plus, I don't know, some something stupid like new random next from one to five. So this will add a random number from one to five to the counter. There's really no reason for this other than to showcase uh, the registration capabilities and the injection capabilities of this system. So that's what we're doing here. And I'm gonna now go to the app.cs and in here, as you can see, I have the configure services method. And this gives me a service container, just like in .NET Core, that I can just do services.add singleton and I can register a service to be injected. In this scenario, it is the counter service and that's it. Same way that you would do in .NET Core. And now, again, this is the exact same programming model and we're making a cross-platform mobile app. We're going to go to the counter.razor component and I'm going to say inject counter service and I'm going to give it the same alias. And instead of doing plus plus here, I'm going to say count equals counter service dot increment and I'm going to give it the count and that's it and I'm going to just rerun this real quick and I'm going to show you what happens now when we click the button and you see this is very fast I ignore the fake errors at the bottom these are not real errors so application is running and I'm clicking so it is incrementing adding a random number from one to five on top of my counter so this is working fine and my service is actually easily injected if I, in, in fact, if I add a breakpoint here and I click increment, I am hitting the breakpoint and I'm debugging the app as we speak. So all that is working because Blazor fundamentally is just rendering the stuff instead of HTML to what Xamarin and what the app itself is expecting to see. So the possibilities are endless because the model is practically the same. Well, obviously we don't have all the components yet to make our apps very flexible but this is a very good starting point and i want you to get involved into this because hopefully we can get this off the ground i personally never got into xamarin whether that's forms or native because i just didn't really like the programming model but this this i can totally use and i can totally see myself building an app with this let's go back to the solution explorer i want to show you you might encounter an issue where you cannot run the ios version of the app and in fact let's see how we can run the ios version of the app well, first, let me just say that you do need a Mac in your network in order to do this. You cannot do this without a Mac. Um, and that's because it's, it's just how running on iOS works. So there's not much you can do on that. But if I click uh, simulator, iPhone simulator on the top, and then specify the iPhone 11 iOS, hopefully this won't automatically connect to my Mac on the network and I can show you how you can do it. Oh, it will just automatically connect to my Mac. Uh, okay, that's because I already have configured it to do so. Let me see if I can actually... Yeah, you can see here that this... Is per... Yeah, that's the, that's the view that you're going to get. And what you will need to do is add the Mac. And you're going to have to give your Mac's address within your app network in order to do so. If you don't have a Mac, you unfortunately cannot do this. So keep that in mind. Um, and this is the exception I want to show you now the template that's coming out of those uh, Templates we just installed will throw this exception if you try to run on iOS I'm gonna show you how you can fix this real quick The first thing we need to do is we need to create a new host because there is an issue with uh, this one running uh, Currently, so we're gonna create a new class 
and we're gonna name it mobile blazor bindings host and in here i'm gonna paste a chart of code where you're gonna find actually a link to that because i don't want you to see uh, me typing all this this is just sort of boilerplate code so let's skip over this but the other thing that you need to do is in the app.cs you need to go here and you need to say that the main page equals new content page and then this main page needs to be used as the parent of the hello world component so here and last but not least we need to go to the hello world razor and we need to change the content page to content view and that's it and now if I do this again in my iOS application it should quickly build it and allow me to run it and it should run fine without any exceptions yeah of course that wouldn't work because I didn't actually use my host so this host dot needs to change to mobile blazer bindings host dot sorry for that let's just run it again and hopefully this time it will work absolutely fine and here you go the app is running totally fine and I can oh I'm still having this breakpoint so I'm debugging but I don't need this anymore so I can just keep clicking to that and you see that the button click times are increasing so with these small changes you can actually get that thing running in iOS as well again find the link to that in the description down below I will actually upload the whole code of this uh, demo in my repo that you can find in the description down below as well now you're probably asking how does this all hold together how does it come together and the answer is actually very simple it's just Xamarin forms with an extra dependency package let me just expand here it is using this microsoft.mobile blazor bindings beta package and this is what has the frame and the stack layout and the button component and the label component and all these components that are eventually translated to something that Xamarin forms can work with and this is just sitting on top of that so all the iOS and Android this is you know where the um, quote-unquote native stuff live so the app delegate that you might be familiar with and the uh, main activity Android stuff um, but this code doesn't really matter unless you want to do something very specific to that um, all your code should really be these components and these C-sharp classes in the shared app library using the Microsoft mobile blazor bindings and this is all open source you can go and take a look I'm gonna leave the link in the description down below you can look into it raise issues create PRs and just help Microsoft get this off the ground now even though this is very experimental still the Microsoft team is actually trying to document everything so if you have any questions please refer to the documentation they have a few things like a to-do app and a weather app which is the two things that apparently they love doing um, and you can see how you can create again a to do app and a weather app talk to the network exactly like they do with their uh, website blazor examples and they are going in detail in some of the component references and the blazor and raised references so i highly suggest you take a look at that and you see what you can make out of it and potentially build something find issues report them back so we can get this thing off the ground I am planning to do a detailed series on this when this is actually finally out I don't want to do it currently because so many things will change that it's gonna be obsolete before I even finish it so that's why I'm gonna skip but I definitely want to make this short video explaining the situation so you can have a better look at what's coming that's all I had for you for today thank you very much for watching special thanks to my github sponsors for making these videos possible if you want to support me as well you're gonna find the link in the description down below Leave a like if you liked this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well to get notified when I upload a new episode and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.